Yeah. Like you're not really learning. You're just memorizing. Oh, absolutely. Like yeah. Cramming for a test and then poof, gone oh, yeah. the second you hand it in. Yeah. Yeah. We've all been there. Well, today's deep dive, it's about breaking free from that cycle. We're diving into Bloom's taxonomy. Bloom's taxonomy. Yeah. And trust me, this isn't just for students. Even though it sounds like, you know, some complicated educational theory. Right, right. It's one of those things that sounds like it's just for the classroom, but it's really not. It's a framework, actually, that can honestly change how you think about thinking itself. Okay, see, now you're making my brain hurt. No, but seriously, <laughs> for anyone hearing Bloom's Taxonomy for the first time, they're like, what are they even talking about? Okay. Give us the basics. So picture this. It's the 1950s. And education, for the most part, is pretty much all about just rote learning. Okay. Memorizing facts, figures, all that. And then comes along this guy, Benjamin Bloom, educational psychologist, hmm. and he says basically, what if we actually, you know, engaged with knowledge instead of just memorizing it? Hmm. Revolutionary, right? Yeah. I mean, I mean, I feel like I was always told to think critically, but... Did I know what that meant? Exactly. And that's kind of the seed of Bloom's taxonomy. It's about moving beyond just being like a human flash drive for facts. Yeah. Yeah. Like, don't just be a robot, actually. Yeah. Like, think about the stuff. Exactly. Don't just download the information. Right. You got to process it. And Bloom, he identified three main domains of learning. Cognitive, affective, and psychomotor. Okay. So break those down because now it sounds like we're getting into, like, science fiction. All right, so we'll focus on the cognitive domain today, the thinking part, because that's where Bloom's taxonomy really shines. Okay. That's the sweet spot. All right, so cognitive, we're thinking about thinking. Bloom's taxonomy still sounds kind of complicated. Sure, sure. Give it to me simply. Think of it like um, like a staircase. Okay. With six levels. Yeah. You start at the bottom with like the simpler skills, and you kind of climb your way up to more complex thinking. And each step builds on the one before it. Okay, so six levels of thinking. Six levels. This is where I start to worry my brain might explode. Oh, well, don't worry, don't worry. We'll take it slow. Give me an example of, like, one level. Okay. Level one, the foundation, is remembering. Yeah. This is your basic recall. Okay. Remembering dates, definitions, those multiplication tables that haunted our childhoods. Okay, so remembering what I had for breakfast this morning. Exactly. That would fall under remembering. Absolutely. But that doesn't seem, I don't know, like groundbreaking. You're right. It's essential, don't get me wrong, but Bloom's taxonomy, it pushes us further. Yeah. So let's say you're learning a new language. Okay. Remembering is like all the vocabulary. Okay. But understanding that's level two, that's where you grasp the grammar, the structure, like the why behind the words. Ah, okay. So instead of just like rattling off vocabulary words, I'm actually like, Forming sentences. Yes. I'm understanding the nuances of the language. You got it. Okay. That makes a lot more sense. It all starts coming together. What well, comes after mm -hmm. understanding this staircase, like, you got me want to climb higher? Yeah. Yeah. You want to keep going, applying. That's uh, level three. And this is where things get really interesting, right? Because now you're not just understanding the language, you're actually using it. Okay. Having a conversation, ordering a meal, maybe even, you know, awkwardly flirting with that cute barista. Ooh la la. Yeah. Okay, applying is where the rubber meets the road. This is where, like, knowledge becomes a verb. I like that. I like that. It's where the theory, it becomes action. So if remembering is, like... The ingredients and then understanding is the recipe. Applying is actually cooking the meal. Ooh, I like where you're going with this. <laughs> I like that. But, you know, let's not forget, even the most um, skilled cooks, they can benefit from understanding why a recipe works. Okay. That's where analyzing comes in. Okay. Level four. Analyzing, so we're like dissecting the dish, we're figuring out what makes it tick. Okay, now I'm picturing like those chefs, you know, they can taste the sauce and be like, need a pinch of salt. You exactly. Know? They know what it needs. They understand the different components. And and remember that article you sent me about the successful military campaigns? Yeah. Analyzing those, like, like Napoleon's strategies, for example, that can help us understand the applying level, right? Because he didn't just know military tactics. He used them. And he used them in like innovative ways. Wow. That's analysis in action. From from delicious meals to military genius. <laughs> See, this is why I love these deep dives. Okay. <laughs> Analyzing, breaking things down. What is the next step? So level five then is evaluating. So think of like a food critic. Yeah. Okay. Someone who doesn't just understand like flavors, but can actually judge them. Right based on, you know, established criteria like presentation, creativity. Okay, but this is where things get a little, like, 
subjective. Yeah. Right. Because like one person's Michelin star meal is another person's. I could have made this at home. Precisely. Evaluating, it is about forming judgments, but you're doing it based on evidence on criteria, and those can vary depending on, like, the context, right? Like, think about how you would evaluate a piece of art versus, like, a scientific study. Right, yeah. Different standards, different criteria, but you're still using that same level of thinking. Okay, okay, that makes sense. So I've tasted, I've dissected, I've judged. Yeah. What is left? What is, like, the summit? What is, the like, the top of this cognitive Mount Everest we're climbing? This is where it all kind of comes together, right? So level six, the peak, is creating. Our chef, after tasting, analyzing, and evaluating countless dishes, invents a brand new culinary masterpiece. Ah, so... Creating, it's not just about understanding what's already out there. It's about bringing something new into the world. Exactly. It's that aha moment. Creating is about synthesis, innovation. Okay, now this is making me hungry and creatively inspired. I don't know what's going on. That's what we like to hear. And, you know, this is actually a perfect example of how Bloom's taxonomy, it isn't always linear, right? Like that staircase we first imagined. You might be evaluating a dish and suddenly, boom, you get a flash of inspiration for a new creation. You're jumping between levels. Wait, hold on, hold on. You're telling me it's not a straight climb? This whole staircase metaphor? You just, like, flipped it on its head. Mm. Tell me more about this nonlinear Blooms. Well, you see, back in 2001, some of Bloom's former students, they realized that the original taxonomy, while groundbreaking for its time, it didn't fully capture the dynamic nature of learning that we were talking about. So they said scrap the staircase and what they replaced it with? A trampoline. Yeah. A roller coaster. Like, what's the new metaphor? Think of it more like um, like a jazz ensemble. Okay. Where the musicians, they're whiffing off each other, moving kind of fluidly between melodies, harmonies. You're not limited to this rigid progression. You can jump between levels as you're engaging with the material. This is this is blowing my mind. Because I always, I always thought of learning as this, like, linear climb. You know, you start here, you end there. But this is this is making it so much more dynamic and... and I don't know, exciting. And it highlights how important it is to be comfortable, I think, with moving between these different levels of thinking, right? It's not about like mastering one and then moving on. It's recognizing when you need to maybe analyze before you can fully evaluate or how creating something new, oftentimes that requires you to go back, maybe remember fundamental principles. Wow. Yeah, I like that. It's like you're constantly like tapping into different skills, different ways of thinking. Exactly. Okay, I'm convinced this is ah. this is a game changer. But like in everyday life, right, how can we actually put this into practice? It can't just be about like analyzing Napoleon's military <laughs> tactics every time I'm in the kitchen, right? Well, you don't have to have a Napoleon complex to use Bloom's taxonomy. Think of it more like um, like a mental toolkit, okay? Okay. When you're learning something new, use the levels as a checklist. Like, okay, have I moved beyond just remembering the facts? Do I actually understand the concepts? Can I apply this knowledge in like a practical way, my analyzing the information, evaluating its strengths and weaknesses, maybe even finding ways to create something new based on what I've learned. So it's about being more intentional, like more aware of how we're engaging with information. Yes. This is this is incredibly powerful. I'm, I'm yeah. like rethinking my whole approach to learning right now. It's a different way of looking at things. And don't forget the power of, you know, recognizing maybe what your strengths and weaknesses are at each level, right? Maybe you excel at remembering and understanding, but you struggle with analysis or perhaps creating, you know, that's where you truly shine. And Bloom's taxonomy, it can help you target those areas for growth. This has been an incredible deep dive. Bloom's taxonomy, or maybe especially in its updated form, is such a valuable framework for like anyone, I think, who wants to be you know, a more active and engaged learner. Absolutely. It encourages us to move beyond just passive absorption and to become, you know, creators, innovators, lifelong learners. So to leave our listeners with something to ponder, the article mentioned a Bloom's taxonomy specifically for the digital age. What could that look like in the world of AI and virtual reality? Could we one day create entirely new levels of thinking fueled by technology? Hmm. Food for thought.